everybody, welcome to my next, uh, video. This isn't a restaurant review or anything like that. Um, you know, it's got something to do with school. Um, this, actually, this, there's an article I got here. I've been kind of sitting on some of these articles for, like, a month, maybe. Maybe longer. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to talk about some of them now, since I got time. Well, one is, um, this one's about education and school and stuff. Uh, I have very strong opinions on education, um, and I'm going to talk about them here. I'm going to talk about it first and then read the article. Uh, what it is, is, uh, here in Kentucky, the state, I'm going to start by framing it this way. The state capital here in Kentucky is Frankfurt, like the city in Germany. But what it is, is the people that were in power back in the early 1990s were incompetent. I mean, you know, as far as, like, education goes, they tried the Kentucky Education Reform Act, or K-E-R-A, CARA for short. Let me tell you what. You want to hear about how much I hated high school? This has got a lot to do with it. They would pull us out of class because of this stupid state law and have us do stuff that had absolutely zero, zero, no joke, zero zip, to do with what we were learning in school. Nothing. I mean, they would pull me out of class. I'm a senior in high school. And they would ask us stuff like, you know, like to do like team building stuff. And we're like, you know what? This has got nothing to do with what we're learning in, in class. You know, we'd rather be in class than get, get pulled out just for you to run tests on us or ask us these ludicrous questions that have got nothing to do with what we're doing in class. You know, and it made me miss, like, so much class. I mean, it was a wonder I passed my geometry class. You know, I mean, and it's like, the nice thing is, is the teacher knew that, you know, I wasn't skipping class just because I didn't feel like learning and I hated math. I wasn't a big fan of geometry anyway, but that was irrelevant to the point. I was missing because of, you know, I unfortunately was one of the unlucky souls that had to, you know, was getting beat by this law because the people in Frankfurt back in 1992 decided, oh, we want to, you know, run tests on these kids against their will and not ask mom and dad for their permission, by the way, you know, to do this. And, you know, like have them write papers on stuff that has nothing to do with what they're learning in school. I'm serious. I mean, it was like, like about like, what you like about your town. That's none of your business what I like about that town. I mean, it's like back then I thought Fort Thomas was, you know, the shit. <laughs> Don't ask me what I think of it now. That's besides the point. But, you know, it's like all kinds of dumb shit that had nothing to do with what we were learning in school, like that. Um, and they also asked us to, you know, go, like, like do team building stuff with, like, like, why we would, like, if we ran the country, how we would handle stuff, and we're like, you're asking a bunch of pissed off 17 and 18 year olds that? That's not very smart of you, is it? <laughs> you know, and then we had to write papers on stuff that had nothing to do with what we were learning in class. In class. Like that geometry class that I told you I was constantly getting pulled out of. Okay, here's one that we had to write for that class. Tell us about your math history. I'm not making this up. This is an actual thing that came from the state government that we had to do. I wrote, I got an A on it. And to this day, 20 years later, I can remember what I wrote. It was one line long. It was one sentence. I wrote, that's none of your business. I got an A. And I'm like, you know, it had to get sent to the government. I'm serious. I'm not making this up. And, alright, that's none of your business. I actually turned it in. And, uh... The teacher for that class, I was like, I was like, you know, really, can I give this to you now? And she's like, go home and think about it, you know, because, I mean, I'm like, why? You know, there's, like, I'm not going to change my mind in, you know, an hour or the next five minutes, and I ain't going to change it overnight either. You know, I had an A on that. <laughs> because I was like, that's none of your business. You know, I don't, you know, I really don't want, you. it's none of your business. It's got nothing to do with what I'm learning in class. You know, it's like if they'd said, you know, tell us why you think this law is stupid, then I would have had, I would have unloaded on them. <sighs> you know, and, and it's like, you know, on top of, you know, like my senior English class being ungodly hard, it's like, 
like we were busy dealing with that malarkey with the with the state. I mean, it caused us to have extra homework and stuff. I mean, we're just. I remember my senior year. Like I would be upstairs for like five or six hours a day doing homework for like half of that, and I'm like. Like, my parents were like, are you okay up here? And I was like, I would go to my room, and that's all I would be doing for hours is homework. And, and mom and dad were like, yeah, I get to be in like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And mom and dad were like, are you done with your homework yet? No. Why not? I was like, do you really want to know? <laughs> like, uh, I was like, you know, I miss so much class, and I complain to my parents about it. They're like, just shut up and deal with it, you know. It's, it's, the state, you know, I'm like, I couldn't beat it through mom and dad's head that I'm like, look, they're pulling us out. I'm missing a lot of class, and I struggled through my geometry class just because I was missing so much class because of this idiotic state law that, you know, I was, I, there's no wonder I was struggling through the class. It wasn't like I was, you know, missing class because I'll tell you what, Highlands, which is where I went, they are so anal about knowing exactly where you are pretty much at all times that you couldn't fart without the principal knowing it. I'm serious. I mean, it, it's that's how uptight they are about where their students are. I mean, you could not play hooky and them not know it. <laughs> I mean, it's like, because they kept a pretty tight lid on the kids. I mean, it, I'm not making it up. You can back me up on this one. Uh, but anyway... Eventually, I, I'd say in the last, in, in the intervening 20 years that I've been out of high school, they admitted finally, and it was in this century, that that was a fuck up on their part. No. Really? Who would have guessed? I could have told them that. Really? I mean, it's just like, you know, it makes you roll your eyes and shake your head and grow. And I'm like, I'm like, that was a no-brainer. And it's like, they changed it to something else after a while. But I remember this. This is the other thing, and I need to mention this now while I'm thinking about it. After my, after the people I graduated with graduated, after that school year ended, which was in 1993, uh, they made it mandatory. They, it was called portfolios that you had to do for English and math. They made it mandatory for you to have that just to graduate high school. I'm serious. My mom was like, I should have held you back a year. I told my, I, I very unceremoniously told my mother to go to hell. <laughs> that was one time I just completely, I said, I, I cussed mom out and told her to go to hell. <laughs> Which is not like me, if you know me well enough. I would never mouth off to my mother like that, but I just lost my temper and I said, Fuck that. I was like, fuck that shit, Mom, you know, no, go to hell. And I showed her why, and I said, do you think I want to get held back because of this stupid-ass law? No. I said, uh-uh. <laughs> you know, uh-uh, because uh, I'm like, yeah, that should not be a requirement for you to graduate high school. I said, you know, no, uh-uh. Tony, <laughs> Tony, on the other hand, uh, came, graduated after me, and I think he had to, that law was still in, a, in play when he graduated from Highlands, because he graduated from there, too, and he told me that, yeah, they had to do that, and it was like, and they had to, he told me what a pain in the butt it was, just to, you know, like, they had to go through all, like, seventh grade, from seventh grade through twelfth grade, which is, Highlands had at the time, and of course, it's 6 through 12 now, but in the middle school and high school together, because they're both up there in the same three, well, four building complex. But, you know, they had to go through everything that they had done from, like, the seventh grade on and put it all in a portfolio and turn it into the state, and the state had to approve it. And it's just like, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm glad that that part passed me by. It affected me again when I graduated from college. I had to go to the dean of the English department, the Lit and Lang department, Literature and Language department, for sure. This was before it split. And I said to him, I said, okay, I know i got to do a portfolio. I said, but what I need you to tell me is what I need to turn in. <laughs> and he said, oh, I thought uh, you were going to ask me 
He was on it and I said, no, that's not the question. The question is, what do I have to turn in? You know, how many things do I have to turn in to meet the requirements so I can graduate? And, and, and I said, because I know what it is for high school, because, you know, I dealt with it in high school, so, you know, I ain't worried about that. I tell you what, uh, this is why I know it was still going on in 2000, and then they got rid of it. I tell you what, I was not a happy camper about that. I'm like, you know, really, I mean, it, it's total mistake. Total, utter mistake. You know, they could have asked us back in 92, and they could have fixed it then, and that would have been the end of it, but shows you, you know, sometimes the idiots in government don't listen when they should be. You know, especially when they're pissing off future voters, you know. That's not very smart of you, <laughs> you know. And, and Richard, I'm sure you're watching this. <laughs> you know, so that that is kind of a shout for you. This has got a lot to do with, and speaking of Richard, and, and I'm going to get on to this article finally. Um, Richard, I, I know you're not a big fan of certain people in government right now, including the person that part of this is about. Although, uh, another person that's in this article, you're a big fan of. And it's not Sarah Palin. It's not your sweetie from Alaska, Richard. So, don't get don't get that in your head, okay? But this is about um, education. Uh, I forget what the name of the article is. This is something I found on Yahoo, of course. But I just wanted to, you know, get my little rant out first about that. And then talk about this. Because this has got a lot to do with the state of Kentucky. Uh, and I want to read this more or less verbatim. It says, Washington, President Barack Obama on Thursday will free ten states from the strict and sweeping requirements of the No Child Left Behind law, giving leeway to states that promise to improve how they prepare and evaluate students, the Associated Press has learned. The first ten states to receive the waivers are Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, Massachusetts, Minnesota, New Jersey, Oklahoma, and Tennessee. The only state that applied for the flexibility and didn't get it New Mexico is working with the administration to get approval, White House official told AP. The official spoke on the condition of anonymity because the states have not yet been announced. A total of 28 other states, including D.C. and Puerto Rico, have signaled that they too plan to seek waivers a sign of just how vast the law's burdens have become as big deadline nears. Obama planned to speak about the waivers Thursday afternoon at White House. No Child Left Behind requires all students to be proficient in reading and math by 2014. Obama's actress away that fundamental requirement for those approved for flexibility, provided they offer a viable plan instead. Under the deals, the states must show they will prepare children for college and careers, set new targets for improving achievement among all students, develop meaningful teacher and principal evaluation systems, reward the best performing schools, and focus help on the ones doing the worst. In September, Obama called President George W. Bush's most hyped domestic, domestic accomplishment an admirable but flawed effort that hurt students instead of helping them. He said that it was necessary because Congress failed to update the law despite widespread bipartisan agreement that it needs fixing. Republicans have charged that by granting waivers, Obama was overreaching his authority. The executive action by Obama is one of his most prominent in an ongoing com campaign to act on his own where Congress is rebuffing him. No Child Left Behind was primarily designed to help the nation's poor and minority children and was passed a decade ago with widespread bipartisan support. It has been up for renewal since 2007. But lawmakers have been stymied for years by competing priorities, disagreement over how much of a federal role there should be in schools and, in recent Congress, partisan gridlock. For all the cheers that states may have about changes, the move also reflects the sobering reality that the United States is not close to the law's original goal, getting children to grade level in reading and math. Critics say that the 2014 deadline was unrealistic. The law is too rigid and led to teaching to the test and too many schools feeling they're labeled as failures. failures. Under No Child Left Behind, schools that didn't meet the requirements for two years or longer face increasingly tough consequences, including busing children to higher performance schools, offering tutoring, and replacing staff. 
the deadline approaches, more schools are failing to meet requirements under the law, with nearly half not doing so last year, according to the Center on Education Policy. Senate officials said that's because some states today have harder tests or high test numbers of immigrant or high numbers of immigrant and low income children. But it's also because the law the law requires states to raise the bar each year for how many children must pass the test. And the states granted a waiver still students will be will still be tested annually. But starting this fall, schools in those states will no longer face the same prescription act of actions filled out under No Child Left Behind. And school's performance will also probably be labeled differently. The pressure will probably still be on the lowest performing schools in the states granted a waiver, but mediocre schools that aren't failing will probably see the most changes because they will feel less pressure and have more flexibility on how to spend federal dollars, said Michael Petrelli, vice president of the Thomas B. Fordham Institution, an educational think tank. While the president's actions mark a change in education and policy in America, the reach is limited. The podcast states of Pennsylvania, Texas, and California are among those that have not said they will seek waiver, although they could still do so later. On Tuesday, Educational Secretary Arne Duncan said states without a waiver will be held to the standards of no child left behind because it's the law of the land. Some conservatives view Obama's plan as not giving more flexibility to states, but as imposing his vision on them. Republican John Klein from Republican from Minnesota, who chairs the House Education and Workforce Committee, said Thursday that this notion that Congress is sort of an impediment to be bypassed, I find very, very troubling in many, many ways. Duncan maintained this week that the administration desperately wants Congress to fix the law. In an election year in a divided Congress, that appears unlikely to happen. Klein, who was speaking at an event at Conservative American Enterprise Institute, said that in the House, there was some bipartisan agreement on how to fix No Child Left Behind, but in many ideas, areas, there was disagreement. He said later in the day he would release Republican written legislation that seeks to restore state's authority in education. California Representative George Miller, the committee's ranking Democrat, has said that such partisanship means the end to No Child Left Behind reform in this Congress. Senator Tom Harkin, a Democrat from Iowa who chairs the Senate Committee with Jurisdiction Over Education, has said he believes it would be difficult to find a path forward without a bipartisan bill in the House. The Senate Committee last fall passed a bipartisan bill to update the law, but it was opposed by the administration and did not go before the full Senate for a vote. Like I said at the beginning of you know, uh, this video, you know, Kentucky has had a state law called CARA. They've repealed it for something else that sounds like CARA, and then they've since modified it, too. Um, I can understand why Kentucky asked for a waiver, because I can tell you we are, the state of Kentucky is actually trying to improve the educational system. I can't speak for the other states mentioned at the beginning of the article, you know, but I mean, if they want to improve the educational system, you know, they can actually use Kentucky as a model of what's wrong. Okay, because like, for example, we went to Highlands. How do you know I went to Highlands? Highlands is actually in the Fort Thomas school system. Um, you know, this is like one of the more affluent towns, so they can actually afford for them to get halfway decent education books and stuff. I can tell you what, and if they want to show how what a model school should be, elementary school, the elementary school that Tony and I went to is actually ranked in the top ten in the nation. Tony and I went to Woodfield Elementary, and you know if they wanted all of the schools to be good, they should model it after Woodfield. I mean, it was even a nation top ranked na national elementary school when Tony and I went there and I can tell you why. They were extremely good about teaching the kids. I mean they were. I mean I remember that when I was a student there. Um, you know, and they should use that model up at the high school because I tell you what, I mean they were just off the hook with it at Woodville. Um, at the high school they if you look up the word whiny in the dictionary it says see them. Because I'll tell you what, 
they, granted, they were Nazis about not, you know, saying that they were, you know, Heil Hitler or whatever, but they were, you know, they were Nazis about following the rules. I mean, they were just, it was like, you know, like the soup Nazi, like no soup for you. It's like, you know, I mean, they were very, very strict. Back <clears throat> when Tony and I were students there, and this is another thing that y'all would be interested in knowing, um, they would actually allow us the choice to either eat in the cafeteria or allow us off campus to go somewhere and eat. People think I'm making this up because they don't allow it now. They make you eat. I, I think they stopped doing that right after Tony left because um, he was still he was still allowed to do it when he was there. <clears throat> They stopped letting the middle school do it when I was in middle school in like the 8th grade. It's because too much crap happened and they campused the middle school. But, you know, once you got to be a freshman, you were allowed off campus to, you know, go eat wherever. <laughs> People think I'm making this up when I talk about it. You know, as an aside, I went down the hill to, uh, it's, uh, something, it's either five, the, the nine four nine or nine five nine or something like that, something fifty nine or six five nine or something like that or eight five nine something like that. The bar down there, and I would eat lunch in the bar. And people think I'm like, so like you did what in high school? Yeah, I'd eat lunch every other day in the bar, and, and the <laughs> I was a drunk. And then the funny part of it, no, I was not a drunk. I actually they wouldn't serve any alcohol until you know two o'clock or afterwards because, you know, all the high school kids were in there. They of course probably sell alcohol all day, you know, um, but, you know, they now since they've campused the kids to the high school because, you know, the uh, campus was having problems, the cafeteria was having problems making ends meet. Uh, you know, but we absolutely, you know, we were allowed down the hill, you know, it was great exercise for us. I mean, you know, if they want, you know, if they're going to whine about, you know, stuff like education and exercise and stuff, well, you know what, they should allow the kids, like if there's like restaurants and stuff nearby, they should allow the kids to walk to those restaurants and eat, give them the choice. You know, that's one thing, you know, because that gives them exercise, because they'll have to walk there and walk back, you know, and it's, you know, a lot more fair. Well, the other thing is, um, you know, as far as education goes, I mean, they really do need to, yes, work on it because, you know, stuff like, you know, Kara that I went on about, you know, earlier at the beginning of the video, I mean, that interfered with a lot of stuff. I mean, it's like, they should talk to me about what, like, I've seen that's wrong from, like, my school days because I remember <sighs> everything. I mean, I did ultimately graduate from college with my bachelor's in English. Although I had to basically jump through some hoops and basically bark like a dog just to get it. Uh, um, but anyway, I just wanted to say that here. Uh, so, and I'm sorry it kind of went on long. It's just this is one of the, education is one of the things that just really is, you know, something that I feel passionate about. No, I'm not going to go be a teacher. I mean, it's like unless like, you know, like things change and I might go on and get my master's and teach. English English literature in the high school, but we'll see. Well, anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll have some more videos soon. Bye.